Hey everybody, it's Haneke again and today we're going to have a look at camp locations where there is a pre-existing structure for you to build in. Now I've got a few great locations to show you so let's just jump straight in and go have a look. The first location is Jay Schramm's house, also known as the Cat House, in Morgantown. This is a beautiful pre-war structure in pretty good condition. There's not too much junk on the floor, so there's plenty of room for you to add extra things. Outside there's lots of space for placing your crafting machines or planting crops. There are a few crops already growing wild outside the back door. On the upstairs you'd probably want to put a few rugs down as there's some holes in the floor. But there's all sorts of unusual decorations on the walls and in the building. There's a space up here where you can place generators and things. You can place your camp machine pretty much anywhere on the property. And the best thing about it is its proximity to Morgantown, so you have access to the train station, you have access to the airport and the train yard where there's lots of scorched, there's also the event collision course that's run there. Plenty of enemies in Morgantown, the actual town, so lots of things to do in this area. Our next location is here in the Toxic Valley at the Lakeside Grill in Clarksburg. Now this is pretty much the only diner in the whole game where you can actually build inside as far as I'm aware. It's a beautiful location with lots of space. There are a few enemies that spawn here, but if you set up with some gun turrets and things, you should be fine. The diner itself does already have a lot of furniture in it, so maybe the best way to go would be to build a building next to the diner and incorporate the diner as part of your overall property alongside a house that you build separately. You can place your camp machine pretty much anywhere on the property, but it's a cool and unusual sort of structure and you'll find that pretty much nobody else has this kind of building. The next location is behind the mountainside bed and breakfast which is near Foundation and it's a set of cool stairs that lead up to a lookout at the top of this mountain. Now the best thing about these stairs is there's numerous flat areas where you can attach foundation blocks and build your own mountainside house. It's different and unusual, there's beautiful views. The location next to foundation is also handy because of the traders and the various things you can do in this area, close to White Springs, close to the centre of the map. So all in all, it's a cool and unusual location. You can of course place your camp machine anywhere in this area. And remember that a camp machine gives you four and a half stories up and four and a half stories down worth of build circle. So if you place it right in the middle of the stair area, you should be able to build all the way up and all the way down if you choose to. Our next location is back out near Monongah. It's known as the Keep Off House, but I like to call it the Red Star Cabin. I think this location is really underutilized because it's just such a fantastic building. 
It's one cabin that's in a group of three that are next to each other, but this one is the largest and has the least damage. On one side there's a smaller cabin that's also pretty good, but not as good as this one. And on the other side spawn a whole lot of high level super mutants. So you can farm them every day to see what you can get out of them, which would be points and sometimes legendary gear. The beds are all usable, the little living room is also usable. There's a trader who basically lives here all the time, so that's very handy from a sales point of view when you want to get rid of some stuff. Sometimes she has special things, but mostly just as a point for selling your gear. You can place your camp machine pretty much anywhere on this location. There's a huge balcony where you can place all your crafting machines. There's also a red stag carcass out the back. Plenty of room for growing crops and having water machines. Well worth a look if you're looking for a pre-war existing structure to build in. My last location for today is the train carriage bunker in the mire. This is a small bunker that's been made out of a few train carriages. It's already fully furnished, so you don't really need to do anything much in the actual bunker. What could be cool is if you build another structure on top of the bunker and have this just as a secret little getaway underneath. The bunker is underneath the large power pylon, so you could build another structure on top of the bunker and under the power pylon. You're in close proximity to Haven Church and a number of random spawn points, so that's always a plus. This is also a location where the nuclear keycard convoy goes over regularly, so if you're after nuclear keycards, they're basically coming right to your door. The mire can be very beautiful and very relaxing, so it's a pretty safe location. Well that's everything for this video. I hope you found some of these locations interesting and you're interested in going out to have a look at them. It just gives you a few more options in your building. And don't forget if you build in a pre-existing house, you spend none of your budget on the actual house so all of your budget can go towards decorating and crops and other things other than the actual house structure. So that's always a bonus. Thank you very much for watching, I really appreciate it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps me to grow my channel and the more my channel grows, the more content I can bring to you guys. I hope to catch you in my next video, which will be out soon, and I'm always open to suggestions if anybody wants to see something in particular. Please drop me a note in the comments about it. I will see you all around Appalachia, and until then, this is Haneke signing out.